Casey Gray here from The Conscious Builder. Now, in the building world, you hear a lot about R values and trying to achieve those R values and improving those R values on projects, but it's also important to consider other factors other than just achieving that insulation value that you need for your project, especially when it comes to retrofits. Today's video is brought to you by Rockwell and 475 High Performance Building Supply. Thanks to them, we continue to create great content for you right here on the Conscious Builder YouTube channel. Before we dive into the technical details, let's take a tour of this net zero energy ready retrofit during the construction phase. We'll showcase some of the wall assemblies before the team closed everything up. And if you want to see an introduction to this project, you can see a previous video where Dana, the client, gives us a tour as well as showcases some of the grants and available funding that she's utilizing here in Ontario. So here I'll share what we're doing on the envelope. One of the reasons we love to use these products together is because it makes the whole wall permeable, right? So moisture can travel towards either direction. Vapor can travel towards either direction if need be. So we have three inches of the Rockwell Comfort Board 80 on the exterior for continuous insulation. And that goes over top of the Adhero, which is our weather and air barriers. That's a peel and stick membrane. And then we have all the tapes that work with that through 475 as well. So we have the Contiga tape and then we have our Exto Seal at the bottom, which is our flexible tape for all of our sills, whether that's a door sill or a window sill. The other thing we had to do on this wall actually is that the bottom of the wall was brought and we were dealing with some moisture issues previously. So all of the exterior sheathing got removed and because it was removed, we were actually able to add the insulation. So we did rock wool comfort bat inside, this, inside the wall, so in between the studs, put new OSB on before we started doing the adhero and the exterior insulation. So other details that you need to think about when you're adding exterior insulation is how are you going to flash the bottom of this? So yes, this is kind of our, our weather barrier, but the chances of the water coming through the exterior insulation is pretty minimal, but either way, um, you have to think about as you're building the wall out, how are you gonna finish the bottom of that? How is that gonna look and so forth? So it is gonna look different than your typical home. The foundation isn't gonna be flush with the siding. In this case, it's sitting out quite a bit because we're gonna have strapping on top of this and then the siding on top of that. So that all has to be covered within your bottom flashing depending on the details for your home. But this is how it's working out for this home. All right, let's head on inside and I'll show you what we're doing downstairs in the basement for the in-law suite. All right, so this is really gonna be set up as a studio apartment. You can see there's a doorway there so you can still get into the main house, but then there's a separate entrance. And this will be mostly used for friends from what I understand and, and to have a separate zone for people who are allergic to cats. <laughs> uh, but this is gonna be one big living space. Uh, so kitchen, living area in here, and then the bedroom back there, and the bathroom's actually here. This will be a separate entrance over there. Uh, but one of the reasons we didn't put a door on is because we have this on a separate HVAC system. So if we put a door to separate the bedroom, for example, then we're gonna need two different heat sources. In this case, because the home is so efficient and we've added so much insulation and air sealing, we can put one mini split in here and that will heat and cool this entire area, although we probably won't need much cooling down here in the basement. So one thing that was great down here, when Dana had bought the house, she insulated the basement with R14 Rockwell Comfort Bat and we were able to remove it and reuse it in the basement header space and throughout some of the areas at the front of the home. 
And the reason why we removed it is because we wanted to take the stud wall and pull it away from the foundation and put insulation behind it, continuous insulation, so we could get rid of the thermal bridges. So what we did here is we actually used XPS because we could use that as our air barrier as well once we taped the joints. So we taped the joints with the Compego tape from 475 High Performance Building Supply, and then we can put the comfort bats back in. And then here you can see we have our smart vapor barrier from 475 as well. And this ends up going over top of everything, but we don't have to worry about taping this because this is not our air barrier. Like I mentioned, we've taken care of our air barrier back here. This is solely being used as our vapor barrier. For the basement ceiling, we used six inch safe and sound insulation. For the bathroom and interior walls, we use the three inch safe and sound. On the main floor interior, we used R14 comfort bat between the existing studs of the exterior walls and three inch comfort board 80, which gives us R12 on the exterior for continuous insulation. For the attic, we put in two layers of the R28 Rockwell comfort bat. We did this because phase two of this project will have a cathedral roof and we'll be able to reuse these bats in the new roof assembly. Along the eaves where the roof comes closer to the top of the wall, we will be installing blown in fiberglass. If this was a new build, we would have planned for a raised heel height to accommodate more insulation. A raised heel is the part of the truss that sits on top of the wall. And if you have enough space there, we can make sure that you do not lose our value as that roof comes down over top of your exterior walls. When it comes to determining the insulation strategy for your project, you'll need to consider products that will go beyond just meeting the minimum R value for code or perhaps whatever you need to hit your budget. If you're doing a high performance home, you're gonna need your entire team to work together. That's homeowner, contractor, architect, and energy advisor, because there are many ways to achieve goals on a project, but you need to be very clear about which goals you're looking to achieve. When doing a retrofit, you don't have a clean slate to work with, which means you may be required to use certain products out of necessity. For example, we decided to use spray foam in the basement headers because it's quick and easy and also met the R value requirement. We also used XPS on the foundation wall because that was the most practical way of achieving our air barrier while providing a higher R value in this area of the home. Here are some questions to get you thinking about what insulation is best for your project. Is it easy to work with and easy to install? Does it have a low carbon footprint? Does it have any potential health effects when handling or exposed to for an extended period of time? Is it fire resistant? Is it permeable? Does it lose our value when it gets wet? Can mold grow on it? And is the product easily available? These are questions that come to mind when we're considering insulation for our projects, and it really makes Rockwell stand out as a premium product. Now here are some more detailed benefits. That insulation generally has a significantly lower embodied carbon footprint than its spray foam alternatives. Because Rockwell Stonewall insulation is a vapor permeable product, it allows vapor to pass through, which provides excellent drying potential. Rockwool is also non-combustible. It can withstand temperatures up to 1,177 degrees Celsius and will not produce toxic smoke or promote flame spreading. We did our own experiment with a blowtorch comparing it to fiberglass bat and a natural product and Rockwool performed the best. For installation, gloves should be worn and we highly recommend wearing a mask as well as eye protection. Overall, the crew really enjoys working with the Rockwool products. It cuts really easily, whether with a saw or a bread knife. And for fastening to the studs, the team preferred the plastic insulation board washers. They found they firm into place much better than the metal discs and were also more cost effective. We've also used the Comfort Board 110 product underneath concrete slabs in our custom builds and retrofits where we were pouring a new slab. This is used to thermally break the concrete slab from the cold ground below. As you can see, there are a lot of things to consider when you're doing a retrofit project and you can't 
always modify what's already there for various reasons. However, if you're building a new home, for us, we like to put in details that avoid foam products wherever possible. And in my opinion, using rock wool is an insurance policy that you only have to pay for once. If you wanna see the full list of benefits from Rockwell, you can check out the link in the video description below. Once again, I wanna thank Rockwell and 475 High Performance Building Supply for sponsoring this video. If you wanna learn more about their products, be sure to check out the links in the video description below. Until next time, I'm Casey Gray, and remember to live consciously.